Good morning, everyone. Today, the story that we are going to read is called How Artists See Animals. It's by Colleen Carroll. And the topic, if you look in the upper left corner, it says fine arts. So what is fine arts? What exactly is included? Fine arts includes the arts of drawing, painting, and sculpture. And I'm pretty sure that everyone knows what an artist is, um, but we can discuss it a little further. Artists use colors, shapes, and patterns in their artwork. Artists use their artwork to show their feelings. Every artist has their own style of drawing, painting, and creating sculptures. Now, if you look at this cover page, there's a painting on it, okay? Um, you can study it, have a look. What, if you look at this cover page, you can see there's a painting on it. What do you see in this painting? What colors and shapes does the artist use? And what do you think the artist is trying to say? What feelings do you feel? Okay, we have our normal vocab list. Let's go over that before we start reading. Number one is vivid, which means bright. Number two, patterns, which are repeating arrangements of shapes and figures. If you guys remember our math lessons, we've done patterns. Number three, shapes, the forms or outlines of objects, triangles, squares, circles, ovals. Number four, painting, a picture made by using paints. Number five, sculpture, a work of art carved or shaped out of soiled materials such as stone. It can even be with clay. Number six, style, the way in which something is made or done. Number seven, texture, the feel of something, especially its roughness or smoothness. Number eight, mobile, a kind of sculpture that hangs from the ceiling and moves in air. The first is The Goldfish Bowl by Henry Matisse. You've probably seen these fish before. Well, not these exact fish, but fish like them. They're goldfish, of course. You may even have your very own goldfish bowl at home or at school. These special goldfish swim in a bowl surrounded by vivid colors and bold patterns. Some of the patterns are made of shapes that look like fish. Point to all the fish shape objects you can find. Now look at the blurry patches of orange floating at the top of the bowl. What do you think they are? The second one is called Goldfish Bowl 2 by Roy Lichtenstein. Here's another bowl of goldfish made by a different artist. It has many things in common with the picture you just saw, but the artists have created two very different works of art. First, this artwork is a sculpture made from metal. The other is a painting. Second, these fish are darker and have heavy black outlines. What other similarities and differences can you find? Which fish look more real to you? Sometimes artists get ideas by looking at the works of other artists whom they respect and admire. Then they add their own unique style to make the work new and original. Which style do you prefer? Really amazing art though. Something that I've noticed, the fish look a little sad. No? What do you guys think? Number three, The Fish by Alexander Calder. Artists often use materials in very clever ways. 
This sculpture is made with lots of odds and ends, such as broken glass, buttons, beads, and stones. The kinds of things that most people would throw away. Some of the pieces were made by hand, like the spiral object in the fish's tail. What other unusual materials can you find? These bits and pieces help you to imagine the texture of a fish's scales. Are they smooth and slippery or rough and sharp? How is the round green glass similar to a fish's eye? This type of sculpture called a mobile hangs from the ceiling in a museum and seems to swim through the air. Imagine the fish swimming through the water with its mouth agape. Do you think it's hungry? How many tiny fish do you think it could swallow at once? This is an amazing piece of art, you guys. Very different. The next one is called Fish Magic by Paul Klee. There's something fishy going on here. The artist has created a mysterious underwater world for a strange school of fish. How many fish can you spot? Some of the things in the picture you might expect to see in the water, such as divers, flowers, and seaweed. But other things don't seem to belong underwater. Can you find them? What a painting though. Why do you think the artist named this painting Fish Magic? With their bright colors against a black background, these bizarre creatures seem to glow in the dark. Would you want to swim in this eerie aquarium? Does anyone know the, the meaning of the word bizarre? Bizarre means strange or weird, and eerie means just a little creepy. The next is Weed Field with Crows by Vincent van Gogh. Where are the birds in this picture? If you notice the black lines that look like flapping wings, you found them. With just a few simple lines, the artist created a whole flock of crows. Have you ever drawn birds this way before? I'm pretty sure you guys have. Some of the larger birds seem to be very close, while the smaller ones seem so far away that their shapes blend into the sky. Perhaps they've flown a, crow a great distance to reach the wheat field, or maybe they're flying away to a different place. Do you think the crows are coming or going? What sounds might you hear if you were standing in this field? The crowing of crows maybe? Okay, the next one. Blackbird over snow-covered red hills by Georgia O'Keeffe. Have you ever pretended to fly like a bird? Here's an artist who's shown the beauty of a bird in flight in a realistic way. If you could hitch a ride on the back of this sleek painted blackbird, what would you see on the ground below? I have another question, guys. Would you ever want to come down? This artist has used gently curving lines to make this graceful bird and to help you imagine what it must feel like to fly. The bird soars through a wide open sky with ex extended wings. Move your fingers over the lines of its body. Now trace these same lines through the air with your arms, as if you were a bird gliding over these snowy hills. Wow. It's just amazing though, isn't it? So let's think about everything we've read, you guys. I have a few questions that I'd like to ask you. Number one, what two kinds of animals do the artists show? Number two, why does the fish by Alexander Calder look hungry? Number three, 
Look at wheat field with crows and blackbird over snow-covered red hills. How are the paintings alike? And how are they different? Number four, which of the six artworks do you like best and why? Number five, if you could meet one of these artists, which one would you choose and why? And now something a little extra you guys can do for fun. Um, choose the one that you like the best and draw something or paint something of your own. It could be about fish, it could be birds, it could be maybe one of your favorite animals, but you can use some of these techniques and be creative.